Oh yes, Hickok 45 back again with the shield. Yes, chapter two. We're gonna have a little fun with it and shoot it some more while we have it. It's a borrowed gun from a kind, loyal viewer, generous. And so why not? Let's put it through its paces a little bit more. And since I did not get around to the hollow points in the first video, got the gabbing or something, who knows? I thought we'd do it right now before I forget. You know, I can be forgetful. Remember, I'm an old guy. You gotta, you gotta forgive me. It wasn't like I was trying to hide anything. We have shot uh, hollow points in it, uh, several magazines, done fine. Probably have trouble today, right? <laughs> and I have actually a couple of different kinds. These are the HST. Yeah, the uh, Federal HST. Let's put those in one magazine. And I have some others here. Let's see. Uh, I know we fired some of these. And I think these are the, yeah, these are some of the, these are some old Georgia arms. You don't even want to see the price on those. Those are probably eight or ten years old. I've had forever. <laughs> Twenty-two dollars for fifty rounds. Yeah, uh, they probably wouldn't appreciate me showing that, would they? It's, it's at least ten years old, I think. And these are 147 grain uh, gold dot hollow points, and that's the same thing that's in there. Let's grab a couple, a couple more. Make sure we have several. And this magazine is about full, so. There we go. So we'll shoot a couple of rounds of hollow points. I guess we ought to shoot some two liters with the hollow points. I don't know that it makes any difference, to tell you the truth. So we're dealing hollow points now. Let's just start out with this guy right here. <laughs> that might make a little difference. We can get that little pan hiding there at the top of the tree. Yeah, all right. Okay, so that mag is empty. No problems with those hollow points. We have eight more. Oh, this should be pretty. Look at him sitting there in the sun, basking in the sun. Point of making a difference on a pot? <laughs> Not really. Okay, well, there's some more hollow points. That's two more magazines. We've, I don't know, four, five, six magazines of hollow points. As I mentioned somewhere, I, I wanted to see for myself if it would uh, feed anything because I like this gun. It could end up being uh, something that gets into my carry circulation, you know? Okay, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So that was one of the things we wanted to do in chapter two. So uh, even with my senility being a senile old guy, I remembered that time. Okay, so put those away. And let's load some regular ammo. All right. So the MP shield. This is chapter two. We'll do a little bit of gabbing, but mainly we're just gonna you know show it to you again and uh, take some shots with it. It is. Uh, oh, before I forget too, uh, had some contact with uh, Derek at Talon Grips. He just about has the town grips ready to ship. And in fact, I think he has some on the way. I guess I may not be able to show them, I don't know. But uh, you should be able to get those pretty soon if you're interested in those. And if you like that sort of thing on your gun and you have a shield, just point that out. Because I cobbled those together for it and uh, didn't want to leave you with the impression that uh, those were factory made for this gun. Because they were not available when the gun came out. And what else about it did we maybe forget to mention in the first uh, video? Uh, well, one thing uh, people have told me, asked me why I wasn't using the uh, blue little loader on these magazines. And, uh, you know, I just didn't think about it. I, I think of uh, using this when it's a double stack magazine. 
and with little single stacks that hold just a few rounds, I don't think about it, but you know, it works pretty better on these than it does some of the other mags. Because these magazines are, they've got a little bit of thickness to them, not much. Uh, there's a little bit of staggering effect there. So it actually works well on those, uh, a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Okay, so we're back to 115 grain UMC. And uh, you know, I know one thing I didn't tell you before, you just, well, I think you probably uh, could infer that from the video or you saw it, uh, what I just did there. You know, I snapped it without a magazine in it. It does not have the magazine disconnect uh, in it that a lot of guns have these days, it seems. Uh, so this gun will fire with uh, the magazine out. Okay, let's see, we want to see that here. Another thing I thought I might show you if I'm uh, steady today, this gun uh, uh, shoots well, <laughs> and it has a good trigger. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, I don't know, benefits or the, the nice things about it is it has a nice trigger. Uh, uh, the improved M&P triggers, I understand. I read, I think, that they're improving the triggers in all their line. You know, uh, the, the, I think this is supposed to have the best trigger. Uh, it's the most recent release, and it has the, their new approach or whatever it might be to the trigger system, and that they're going to be upgrading it in all of their uh, M&Ps, I believe. Okay, I don't know. Call Smith & Wesson, ask them. Uh, but it has a nice trigger, and the sights are right on, and if I can pretend to be steady, <sighs> steady Eddie, I, th I think I can hit something. Well, let me start on something big, like the gong, and then uh, we might move around a little bit. There you go. I like to miss something big first, see. It's easy to miss something small. Not everybody can miss something large. Okay. Uh, we're holding a little bit too low, I think, to begin with on that. Take your time, even on a big gong. <laughs> All right, it has a nice trigger, uh, but you have to you have to do what you've got to do. You've got to get a nice trigger break. That's the challenge of shooting a handgun. You all that have shot handguns a lot know what I'm talking about. Doesn't matter how much you shoot, you can't just jerk that trigger unless you're up really close, close and dirty. Uh, but it does have a break. That, whoops, that you will like if you uh, shoot this gun or try it. I noticed in the comments on the first video that uh, several people had actually picked theirs up and bought one and uh, I didn't see anything negative. I don't know that most people were liking it so far that, that got it. Uh, again, this does. Uh, this is not a Smith & Wesson T&E gun. It comes from a, a viewer and uh, pretty cool gun so far. Big advantage, uh, uh, one of the few advantages really over say a, a Glock 26 or something, it's got the same nice striker fired trigger and everything, is the thinness. Again, if the thinness doesn't attract uh, you, if, if that's not a big deal to you, uh, both in the grip and in the slide, and uh, you know, I don't know, it, there's probably not a huge attraction for you. But uh, if you're looking for something thinner than those other guns, then uh, this should be uh, an interesting choice for you. Okay, let's, uh, let's try again just a little bit. I'm going to try to get my best trigger release. I'm going to try for that little uh, disc between the, the two goats. Uh, and whether I hit it or not, I want to I want to try to try to demonstrate or attempt to demonstrate that this thing is something that if you're doing your job and are having a good day, it will drive nails, it seems.
okay. I don't think I was missing too far off. I was uh, not being as precise as I could be, but I'm gonna try the red plate now. The only problem with it is you can't tell where you're missing unless you're way low or something. low I think okay felt like I was close I don't know where I was exactly going there but uh, any missing is definitely on me because pretty good trigger kind of a thin grip and a you know thin thinnish gun but it is uh, it, it believe me it is uh, well, I don't know what I would say when I when I use the word accurate, you know uh, You know what I kind of mean that they're you're not limited by the gun. That's for sure And it even has a good trigger. So that's always a huge factor Huge factor All right. And we're still cranking along uh, with no problems Shot a few times off camera since the, the other videos and uh Still no malfunctions of any kind, that's for sure. Okay, let me take a couple more over there. At, uh, oh, let's see, not much will fall necessarily. Let's just pick off a pig down there on the lower row maybe. I can see where they hold here. I don't want to fall. I'll try the second one. Okay. Well, those two weren't as stubborn. Let's go back to that first one. It's like he's sitting crooked. Well, at least give him a bad day. Maybe he'll uh, remember me. And Mr. Turkey on the back row just needs a bullet. What did I tell you? He needed a bullet. <laughs> I found him one. I found him one. Okay. And we're back in the summer. Hot, sweaty weather already. Nice. Well, late spring, actually. Let's load one more time. Uh, so, chapter two, mostly shooting. Uh, of course, I'm limited to some extent. If I had my usual supply of, uh, like, the Glocks, you know, or XDs sometimes, if I had uh, 15 magazines, we would just uh, blow up the whole hillside <laughs> with no talking, right? For those who, who uh, maybe not are as quite as perceptive, you, uh, you realize that is a difference sometimes in our videos where we do mostly real-time you know, videos unedited. Uh, when I have a stack of magazines here loaded, it's a little bit different. You don't have to listen to me yak as much, uh, if it's a chapter two especially. We've already done some yakking about the firearm. But uh, this uh, this pretty neat little gun, I'm, uh, I'm pleased with it. Uh, it's a gun I would not mind owning. It's, the price is uh, pretty reasonable, I think, in today's market, you know, between four and 500 bucks and, and uh, you know, it uh, seems to work. It's basically a thinner version of the kinds of guns I like. You sacrifice a little capacity, and uh, you know, that's mainly what you sacrifice, because the gun weighs about the same as a Glock 26. So you don't lose a whole lot of weight, you get a thinner gun. Fits a little bit better, you know, inside the waistband, a little more comfortable. Uh, you give up some capacity. You know, that's kind of what it comes down to. Put him back in the holster here. And let's just go down here a little bit. Oh, let's try the shooting tree. I don't want to get too close. Let me try a couple on it. We haven't shot that thing. Ah, we got targets here. Let's back up a little more. We got a, a clay fire pot that has not been addressed. dealing with a nine millimeter out of a short barrel, but uh, there you go. 
Let's move up a little bit. The cowboy was insulting me. I don't know if you caught that or not, but he called me a name. So, sorry, John. He didn't know I was going to do that. Uh, chapter two is you never know what's going to happen. I'm never sure what I'm going to do, how much I'm going to shoot, and what I'm going to shoot. But uh, it's mainly just get the gun back out and if we can think of a couple of things we forgot to tell you and, and quite often in the first video sometimes you all will remind us you know you'll make a comment you know like about the magazine connect oh hickox they have a magazine disconnect ah that's right i forgot to mention that you know so things like that uh and it gives us an excuse to get it back out shoot some more a little less uh well it's not really pressure but a little less uh pressure or attention to have to make sure we tell you everything because we've already done most of that so pretty cool gun uh fun to shoot no malfunctions and uh, in all the shooting we've done, uh, I think Smith has a winner here. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm criticized for not finding a lot of negative stuff about firearms. And I don't find a lot of negatives in this gun. Uh, again, uh, the biggest negative to me is the capacity. And I don't know. I, I, you know, if you don't like a 9, that's a negative, I guess. Uh, I think I want to own uh, one of these, uh, maybe in a 40, you know, instead of the 9. I'm not sure. I've got a lot of 9s. But I think possibly this gun in a 40 is going to end up in uh, my corral, you know, at, at some point for too much longer because I, I like this gun. You know, I like guns in this size frame. It's about like a baby Glock in that size. It's another option. It's a thinner baby Glock, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that uh, rides comfortably. It might just be something I would like to carry occasionally and shoot. So anyway, chapter two with the uh, M&P shield, it's, it's a nice gun. Life's pretty good.